here's the inside of my uh, 10 meter monoband linear amplifier based around a new old stock Russian GS-35B triode as you can see um, it's uh, got a large clamp around the anode a hose clamp or a jubilee clip uh, 90 to 100 millimeters or four inches across uh, to hold on um, to the copper bar that goes off to the pie circuit via these two Russian doorknob capacitors. There's a silicon sleeve around the bottom, again held on with a hose clamp um, that provides a seal for the air to travel up through from below and through these veins to cool. The uh, tank hole is made from 6mm microbore copper pipe just wound on a hard plastic former. Now I've got two of these uh, Russian doorknob capacitors uh, they're 100 picofarads each a uh, rated at I think 12 kV and uh, don't need to be really as heavy as that I could probably get away with just using one in fact I probably will do a uh, plate choke is anode choke is wound on a piece of 20 mil um, PTFE or Teflon diameter uh, it's about five inches in length six inches I can't remember the number of turns on it but it's about 50 55 uh, microfarads um, which is enough for 10 meters now there's a bypass capacitor down there uh, that's a one nanofarad uh, 15 kb ceramic disc capacitor Moving on to here, this is a new old stock Russian Soviet era uh, vacuum capacitor, variable vacuum capacitor. Uh, so it's rated up at 25 kV. It goes between 3 and 50 picofarads. Um, and it works very well on this. Um, Two, three years ago, I think I paid £35 for it, plus postage from the Bulgaria, Ukraine. It's really jumped up in price now. I think you'd be lucky to find one for less than £70 or £80. Moving on, and that's the uh, plate or anode capacitor. Here's the load watching capacitor. 250, 270 uh, Picofarads, I think it's rated at 3 kV. It's quite a large gap between the veins. Um, works well. Fully meshed for 10 meters. I did try adding extra turns on the tank core, but it didn't really make much difference. I suppose I could add a padding capacitor to it at the back of that, in the bottom. Is another 50 to 55 a uh, micro henry uh, choke this time this one's a, a safety one um, if the um, if these uh, capacitors uh, break down and DC voltage leaks through this should short it to ground Blow the main fuses, and uh, you know it's a safety feature. And uh, that goes off to um, Westflex one hundred and three heavy duty coax. Off to this relay, which I got from China, twelve volt, thirty amps. Seems to work quite well. Um, yeah. That's that, and. Uh, Show you the rear of the front panel. Not very glamorous. Left to right, high voltage, 
um, grid current meter in the middle an anode or plate current meter to the right hand side and there's the uh, there's the wires going underneath the meters and there's a couplers for the uh, capacitors as you can see um, this one here I think that was quarter inch to quarter inch or 6.3 six point three five millimeter and this one was um i think that's a ten millimeter shaft ten twelve millimeter shaft on the um plate capacitor uh so i needed uh that to change it down to quarter inch or six millimeter uh brass rod uh, so it works as an adapter as well as a kind of coupler um, it's kind of got a spring on it as well so it takes up any if there's slightly misaligned it'll take that up uh, well that's that uh, the other thing is when I built this as you can see here I built it out of um, three millimeter thick uh, 30 millimeter wide L section um, and it was riveted together at the top there with some very strong rivets and then I used um, these rib nuts um, to put the um, casings on the covers I wouldn't do this again because the problem with this is there's large gaps which need, as you can see, filled out with several layers of foam insulating tape, um, tape, draft excluder tape. I would, uh, I wouldn't have this overlap either. I would, I would make this more flush because uh, that causes problems as well. Uh, it means that I have to seal the joints, and uh, this. This bit up here does cause, this overlap causes some problems with having a flush fit. So you tend to get the, uh, tend to get a bevel in at the edge of the, the plate cover. Well, that's the uh, RF deck uh, of the GS35B. I bought that uh, valve or tube back in 2000 and 14 or 15 I think about 125 pounds plus uh, 15 20 quid shipping from the Ukraine I think they're about 150 pounds now so they've gone up a little bit this uh, this uh, variable vacuum capacitor was cheap um, but in the last two years it's gone up to about two and a half three times the price of what it was this thing will run at 1500 watts, but it's not rated for that. The uh, power, uh, the transformer, the toroidal transformer, sorry, is only rated uh, for 1500 watts peak, 750 watts continuous, uh, but the legal limit in the UK is 400 watts. I'll show you there's a there's a blower at the back that's uh, attached now that's about half the size recommended um, for this for this triode but uh, I'm not running at a full capacity nowhere near it so at 400 watts 300 400 watts even on data modes uh, it should be uh, should be okay without any issues. In fact, I've, I've checked it with a infrared thermometer, and the inside there gets to about fifty or sixty degrees centigrade or Celsius, and the rest of the cabinet stays cool. Um, tank coil barely gets above twenty five Celsius. These maybe get a little warmer, maybe 30, and that's about 34 Celsius. Obviously, there's uh, induction from heat along here. Uh, the caps, they stay very cool. There's no hot spots, and certainly no hot spots down at the relay. 
and certainly down at this uh, this um, the Scotch choke that doesn't get hot either so after much tune and fro and adjusting it seems to work but as I say I'm going to remove one of these it's surplus to requirements 